In real estate, location is everything. Finding the right data to analyze an area can be challenging. The U.S. Census publishes economic data for free for you to analyze a market. This can help you find growing and declining areas. In this video, I will walk you through how to gather economic data like median household income from the U.S. Census so you can visualize trends all using Python. My name is Ariel Herrera, your fellow data scientist with the Tech and Real Estate channel, where we bridge the gap between real estate and technology. If you enjoy these Python tutorials, then please like this video so I know to make more content like it. All right, let's get started. One of the most common questions I get is, how do I take data from the U.S. Census and visualize it? Although I go through this in detail in my course, I've created a quick Python notebook to show you how to do so as well. To follow along, use the link below to open up the Collab notebook and go to File and make a copy to save it into your drive. You'll be able to run the same Python code that I have here. And the beauty of it is because it's in Google Collab and not on your local machine, you don't have to have Python installed at all. You can get right into the code. And if you're new to Python, check out my previous series for free on YouTube on how to get started in Python using real world real estate examples. What is a US census tract? It's a relatively small geographic subdivision within a county to help with valuable analysis for four reasons. It allows us to go very granular. So think about a population of 4,000 or less, targeted analysis, even more integrated comparisons, and a standardization that the US Census applies that you could use throughout other analyses. Going towards the bottom of the notebook, I have a visual to help connect this. So say if you want to look at median household income across the US, maybe you're looking to go into a new market and you wanted to see median household income that met your standard. Maybe you are going for A-class tenants, those who maybe make 30% above the median household income for that state, and you want to find what those areas are. Here is a map of plotting median household income for the US across counties. So as you could see, the higher income tends to be on the West Coast as well as the East Coast for this example. I believe this is for 2021. Now, the problem here is that if we look at California, for example, one of the counties that we see here is almost the size, if not larger, than the whole state of New Jersey. So this is a really large piece to be analyzing and just contributing one value to. There could be pockets within this specific county that can show us trends. Maybe there's different areas that are starting to have higher median household income or lower. But we're not going to know that just by looking at this huge piece of land that has a summary of data. This is why going down to the US Census tract is very important. Because real estate is hyper local, you not just need to know what state or county you want to invest in, but specifically what neighborhoods and specific areas that you want to target. So we're going to find how to get US Census tracts for the US Census. We're going to get median household income and we're going to plot it you'll be able to do the same exercise with your own county as well. So to start, I'm going to import my packages. Some that you may not have seen before include GeoPandas, which is how we're going to get the data to plot our tracks. Next, we want to bring in our census API key. If you don't have one already, go follow this link and you'll be able to sign up for one for free. Once you have your API key entered, we are now going to retrieve two different data sets. First is going to be median household income from the U.S. Census, and the second is going to be our tracked data. Now, if you're new to U.S. Census data, I'm going to give a really brief overview of how it works. The U.S. Census data gets information every single year for the American Community Survey data, also known as ACS. They are able to get statistical information such as household income, employment rate, education, poverty, and more. A lot of the tools that you see out there pull from this information. The con is that the data is usually lagging. As of March of 2024, the latest data is for 2022. However, it could still be really useful to get an overall landscape of an area. If we go down 
here, we could see there's different surveys. The one that you want to cover down to the block level is American Community Survey five-year data. Data is available from 2009 to 2022. When you click on this link, you will have more of a description of what this data is, how to navigate the API. What I like to look at is twofold. One, the variables that are available, as well as examples. Examples will show you a very detailed view of how you need to make your request if you're looking to get data, say, at the US level or at the track level. Luckily for you, I've done all of this work ahead of time, so you can just skip right into the notebook if you'd like. And I've taken one of the URLs specifically for tracks and put it into a cell. There's a couple of things that we need to enter here. We need the year that we want to get data. So in this case, we're going to get the latest, which is 2022. Then we need a census code. And I'm going to look for median household income. I was able to get this was by entering this into Gemini, also known as ChatGPT, but specifically Google's version. So you could get Gemini for free. I'm looking to get census data at the track level for median household income in Monmouth County, New Jersey. Gemini gave me a response to what that code was. I didn't have to even go through the U.S. Census docs. I was able to just get this code straight from Gemini. I was able to get the latest year, state code, as well as FIPS code for Monmouth County, New Jersey, which is the county that I grew up in. So here I'm entering the year that Gemini provided the U.S. Census code. For tracks, I want to get all tracks. So I'm using a star here. Each abbreviated state has its own two-character state ID. Then county, that's exactly what I got from Gemini. However, if you notice here, I'm actually using the star. So I'm going to actually get all counties across New Jersey so we can have two different wraps. One for the county of my choice and second for all of New Jersey so we can compare. I'm entering my census API key. So I'm going to make a request to this URL to get the data. It took about a second and I want to get a brief overview of my data. So I'm going to transform this response to a JSON object and preview the first three rows. The US Census returned about 2,100 records. The columns that I have are name of my census tract, the value for that median household income, the state ID, county ID, and tract ID. This is really hard to read, even for just the first three objects. So we want to get this into a data frame. Think of rows and columns, almost like an Excel sheet that we can more easily digest. The second piece of data that we want to read in is the track level, the track information for the polygons that are going to make up our map. So the US Census also posts track level polygons. If you go to their site, their census.gov site under Tiger, they have this for tracks, blocks, counties, states, and the whole US. So I'm going to run this and I'm looking at the same year to match what I just got from the census. So it's going to be 2022. And the state is for New Jersey, which is labeled 34. This comes as a data frame, which is great. We have the state code, county code, track code, a geo ID. What is this geo ID? It's basically these three codes put together to make one single unique ID. So every track has its own unique ID based on the state it's in and the county that it's in. Now, what's most important is this column all the way towards the end called geometry. This is the polygon, so basically the shape of our tract and how we're going to plot it down the line. So remember I said previously that we have our census data for tract one in Atlantic County, New Jersey, that the median household income is $44,000, but this is really hard to read. So we're now going to transform this JSON object into a pandas data frame. We're taking the response, putting it into a JSON object, and then into a data frame. We now have rows and columns, our column names are our first row. So we're going to clean up this data set a bit where we take our first row and make that our columns. And then we're going to remove our first row. And now it looks a lot cleaner. We could see we have five different columns, census tract. Then we have the value for median household income for Atlantic County, the census tract number one. It's about $45,000. And we have the state, county, and track code. 
GeoID is the unique value per tract. So what we need to do is create the GeoID column for our U.S. Census data. So I'm going to run this cell where we're combining these three different columns together. And then we're doing one other step to add a feature. The U.S. Census data brings everything in as a string. A string type is not going to work for numeric data. So we are transforming our object, which we have for median household income, into an integer. That way we can plot it later. If we look at the data that we have for median household income and we describe our data set, there's some odd values. The mean value is negative. How can people have negative household income? It doesn't make any sense. So if I actually visualize this data using Plotly Express of the 2,000 plus tracks that are in New Jersey, there are 32 of them that are negative, which makes me believe that the U.S. Census probably did this because they don't have data, the median household income for this track. So instead of saying no data available, they just put a really, really large number that wouldn't make any sense so that you know to clean it up when you do your data analysis. To actually remove these values, I'm going to look at only when median household income is greater than zero. We've reduced our data set. We've removed those 40 or so tracks that had no data that instead have negative 6.6 million. Now we have 2,100 tracks and we each have each track has a geo ID associated with it. So now that we have a geo ID for our US Census data, and if you remember back before when we brought in our track data, we also have a geo ID column, we can now join these two data frames together based on this single column name. So just like in Excel, if you're doing a VLOOKUP, this is the same thing, except we're doing in Python what we call merging our data frames. Here, I'm going to use pandas to merge each of these two data frames. The DF census filter, so this is basically our census data filter to only have values greater than zero, and our track data. We are merging this on the column geo ID, and we're going to do an inner join. So I'm going to run the cell here, and we create a second data frame as well. We set the index to geo ID, and this is going to allow us to now plot this data. I'm first going to start off with county. So the county that I want to look at in New Jersey is Monmouth County, New Jersey, which is the code 025. You can look this up using Gemini and just look up FIPS code for whatever county and you'll see what that code is. Then I am using Plotly Express for their map, map box. And I'm entering in my data frame, my GeoJSON, which is going to be this geometry column here. My census code, which is median household income, the color scale, which you could change, that's just preference, opacity, I'm making this a little bit more opaque so that I can see things better. Actually, I'll show you what this looks like without it, and you'll know what I mean. Um, map box, I like it to be a street view, so I'm going to have that. Latitude and longitude, this you have to manually look up, which is a bit tedious, or what you could do is get the average between latitude and longitude across everything in that geometry column, which could be a bit of a burden. So what I just said here is I looked up what is the center uh, latitude and longitude for Monmouth County, New Jersey, and came up with these values. I'm going to run this here. And now we could see that we have for Monmouth County, New Jersey, for those unfamiliar with this, I'm just going to zoom out first so you could see. This is New Jersey, the state of New Jersey. And if we go all the way out, you could see New York over here, Boston, Pennsylvania, et cetera. So by having this zoom 8.5, it allows me to go right into that specific area that I want to review. So I'm going to reset my view and look at just Monmouth County. I could see here there's particular areas that have high median household income, about 250K being the highest, which even for New Jersey standards is still really high. There looks to be a concentration of these more wealthy areas towards the center part right here and less wealthy towards the water on the right-hand side. Now, it's a little bit hard to actually see what are the neighborhoods behind this. So that's why by using opacity here and setting it to 0.5, I can rerun this and have a better view of what actually are the towns behind the map. So if I kind of dive deeper in here, I could see Homedale Township is the one that has almost 250K in median household income. 
me originally being from the area, that makes complete sense. Million dollar homes, a lot of people um, that have lots of land as well in this area. Then we have towards Red Bank, more wealth too, which is a hot spot that has a train station you can get right into New York. And then we see towards Long Branch, there's lower median household income. And we can view also towards the left-hand side, the towns I'm originally from, an Alpen Freehold area, um, have about 169K. But the issue here is that if you actually look at just Monmouth County, New Jersey, this is awesome, but I would initially think like, oh, these areas probably have lower household income, right? But relative to the state, they're really high. 170K is high for New Jersey. So how do we actually look at all of the data? If we go down, I have the full state here. So if you remember up top, we actually filtered right here to look at only the county. We use our data frame and we located just where county was 025. So if we actually don't pass that in and look at everything, we could see here the entire state of New Jersey. Now, depending on your state, this may take a while to load. So if your state's like Texas and it's really large, you may need to even do this locally because the free compute available for Google Collab won't be available. But here we now get a great landscape of all of New Jersey. We see 250K being the highest for median household income, which makes me realize, oh, Monmouth County being 250K means that this county is likely one of the most wealthy counties of all of New Jersey. And I can dive even deeper and start to look at concentrations of wealth. I could see that this northern part of New Jersey that almost touches New York has a lot of wealth, as well as these pockets over here. What I could tell you from knowing the area pretty well is that these areas in New Jersey have a lot of commuters that work in good paying jobs within New York City and want to live in the suburbs. So they choose to live in New Jersey, but close enough to get in and out for work. Now, looking down at South Jersey, you could see that the wealth starts to kind of disappear right around Monmouth County. That's because most people in New Jersey work in New York for higher income jobs. So at some point, it becomes too taxing to commute, say, all the way from Tom's River to New York City on a daily basis. But what's really interesting here is that this data is from 2022. And again, for me being a local originally to the state and around the central part of New Jersey, I know a lot of people who originally probably would have lived over here, but now live towards this bottom part of New Jersey. Why? Because they got priced out or outbidded. So think of newlyweds who wanted to live where they grew up, the central part, but couldn't, just too expensive. Also, a lot of people went fully remote. So they no longer need to commute into New Jersey. But that begs the question, how would you be able to see a real-time view if you don't want to wait two to three years until the U.S. Census updates? Well, this is why with Coffee Closers, I've taken the small, small, small subset of data I've shown you here and extrapolated this across multiple cities and multiple regions. So what we're doing is we're actually grading neighborhoods from A all the way to D based on multiple factors. So not just those macro and microeconomic stats that I just walked you through, say from the track level county as well as for the whole state, but we're also looking at amenities. So think of Whole Foods, luxury apartments, Equinox, et cetera. We're looking at live market data. It's currently being sold on the market and what has previously sold too. This helps us to get not only an accurate view from 2022, but an accurate real-time view today by combining all these different data sets. So I'd love for you to check it out as well. And if you want me to do more Python tutorials similar to this in terms of plotting economic data, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks.